Before the Hot Boys took over the airwaves in the late 90s with Cash Money Records, UNLV was one of the first super groups out of New Orleans that helped build Cash Money Records. UNLV stands for Uptown Niggas Living Violent. The original members of the group were Lil Ya, Yafet Jones, Tech 9 Reginald Manuel, and Yellow Boy Albert Thomas. The Nation of Podcations sat down with Lil Ya to tell the entire story of UNLV. From growing up on the rough streets of New Orleans to meeting Brian Birdman Williams and Ronald Slim Williams and making their debut album Sixth and Barone released in 1993 on Cash Money Records. Lil Ya tells the group's successes in the early 90s, turmoil between the group, group members and the label. Lil Ya speaks on Tech 9 being arrested and also the untimely passing of Yellow Boy. There would be no Drake, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Juvenile, and the other top cash money artists without the foundation that UNLV built. So let's listen in as Lil Ya tells the entire UNLV story. What's up, what's up, world? It's your boy Lil Ya, aka Ya Fet of UNLV, your white man, and you're now watching. Nation of Podcast, cooling with your boy, you with me? Oh, uh, we came up with it from my cousin named uh, Damien. Him and his partners had they, they used to call themselves UNLV. They never rapped or nothing like that, but it was like maybe five of them. They did what the Holy Ghost at the time, a Catholic school uptown. So you know, I, I guess they just and at that and at the same time, UNLV was winning the college the basketball team. Right. So they just change the acronym from it and you know we we I got that from them. I said, man, look, we living like this. We about to start rapping though. We about to use that name for our group. And it was cool with it. You know what I'm saying? We all grew up in the Wallace Uptown area. Me and Yella grew up on Dries and Ford. And that's like right directly around the corner from each other. You know what I'm saying? And we was like from Pampers to at least 20 years old, you know, on the same on the same block right there. And Tech grew up in a male for me. You know what I'm saying? So when we started UNLV, Tech had to actually move on six and Barone. I met him in junior high school in seventh grade. You know, I bought him on come to find out and six and Barone was right around the corner from uh Dries and Ford. So, you know, I met him and bought him around the corner, you know, we gelled, you know what I'm saying? He gelled with y'all all us. Became good, good friends. You know, we we're like, like real family. You know what I'm saying? And that transpired into you know, a uh, rap group because we was actually a, 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 a like a, like a seven man crew called ourselves UNLV because our reputation and what we used to do and what we stood for. And, you know what I'm saying? We was young and wild, stayed fresh. You know, we was on the street dibbling and dabbling a little bit as youngsters. You know what I'm saying? So we had a reputation already. But we was always, all three of us was always like, you know, fucking with that music. We was musically inclined. You know what I'm saying? From the bands to the music to the rap shit. You know what I'm saying? Nope. So once we started, uh, once we started the rap group UNLV was only me and Tech. And we actually used to go in clubs like Newton's and Club 49. And a lot of places you heard of Soldier Slim, got his beginning in Juvenile and the Everlasting Hitman and people like that. You know what I'm saying? So we used to go to those clubs and we started rapping again. Before Yellow actually started rapping, Yellow was a dancer. He still, you know, considered UNLV. You know what I'm saying? But he rapping was his identity. He used to come along with us to shows and shit and, and dance. And, you know, he was a good ass dancer, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, once we signed with Cash Money, you know, they got to, they got to, actually, I'm, I skipped a part. <laughs> We made a tape in, in the club, Newton's, and we started selling the tape for five dollars a pop. And Baby and Slim got a hold of the tape and they, you know, set up a meeting with us. And once we signed the contract with them, as you and LV, we later uh, came out with uh, another big single that they released. 
like six months later, they was ready to do our album, and that's when we added Yellow Boy to our, our, our group. Right. Our neighborhood did, even though, you know, oh, uh, the Magnolia, Cali, or the Mel for me was in our area. Our section alone, Six and Barone, was like it, it wasn't a project, but it was like vicious. It was a vicious area, right. and everything they did was a project they did in our hood. You know, you got second and D round there. You got. Four and D, you got oh uh, six and D, you know you got all those all those spots, those blocks, and everything going on on a different corner on, in in that in that area. I guarantee you. So I mean, murder was like something that we saw all the time, all the time. You know what I'm saying? It was the middle of '92 when we met being Slim. Oh, uh, we met him through a mutual pilot named Kev. Rest uh, rest in peace, Kevin. Kev, uh, let us, we went to school with Kev, and he actually let us know that baby don't want to highlight us. So he gave us a call. We called him, and he told us to meet him at the office. You know, so we went to, to the office, sat down, and chopped it up. You know, at the time we wasn't, we wasn't, you know, and, and I can I can honestly say we wasn't expecting no big money from signing or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But we did feel like we had achieved one of our goals, and that was to put out a record. Professionally, you know what I'm saying? Okay. That was something that we wanted to do since we was a sporty of scenes back in the days. We didn't get signed for anything. But we got top of the line, oh we got all our publishing, we got top of the line royalties. You know, back then I think it was like six percent or something for an artist, a first time artist, you know, royalty. Mm-hmm. We was getting eleven percent. You know, okay. which was like real good. We had a, a nice set up contract. It was real good. Right. The first album came out in 1993, and that was Six of a Row. And we had uh, singles on, you know, like, we debuted Yellow on the album. Yellow came with the Eddie Bow. That was the biggest uh, song on the album. We also, nah, Six of a Row was the biggest song. I'm my bad. We had Six of a Row, Eddie Bow, and uh, another big bitch. We had three singles on the album. It was independently released by Cash Money, of course, and I remember selling, like, uh, 150000 our first go round. And we actually recorded in Manny Fresh Kitchen, sitting on crease with a with a, a, a cordless, I mean a cord mic, a microphone with a cord on it. You know, sitting on crease actually passing the mic to each other. You know, but oh, uh, I can also remember. The transition of seeing where where Cash Money took us from Fresh Kitchen to Top of the Line Studios after that. So I saw where, you know, we was progressing. You know what I'm saying? Came around, Fresh came around the same time we came. You know? Actually, we was the first first artist that Fresh produced with Cash Money. And from now on, you know, during that era, Fresh, you know, he done everything else. But we was the first artist that that signed that he worked with. The roster was uh was was like Kilo G was the first artist to sign with Cash Money. Period. The pussy beating motherfucker named Kilo G. That road run that shit. For twelve years I've been sentenced to live in hell with no probation and motherfuck bail. The man walked me dead cause I told him what the motherfucking truth was. Suck a nigga's dick and get them cameras out my face, cause. You have to Kilo and we came. After we became, it was uh, Lil Slim and PMW. Then Pimp came. Then Miss T, Miss T, and well, BG came right before Pimp. What's happening, man? You heard me? This the Lil BGZ representing at the backstage of the Big Timers video. To the 13th, man. As I proceed to hit the motherfucking weed, I be giving you exactly what you need. And Miss T came, then Ivy came, and I was basically the roster. Lil Wayne was 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 on, but he wasn't an active member at the time. Okay, you know what I'm saying he, his mom was too young to let him really get out, so you know they they, they waited till you know they, they got to say so from her. I mean, Heavy was a big part of the roster too. I mean, Heavy played a, a major role with CMR. He was like oh oh what you would call an administrator, and he also was an artist. A hype man, and anything you need him to do, Heavy was one that, that did it for the company. Nah, how it was, you know, they, they had everybody set up to where 
say for instance January, it it it, it may be our time to put an album together. It never took us more than two weeks. So they'll have two weeks of studio time booked for us. You know, sometimes the other artists will come through, uh, you know, we need them on a song or whatever, they'll come through for support or jump on a song or whatever, but we never had studio time together. Like, you know, January, it might be our month. You know, February might be uh, our BG month. You know what I'm saying? It was, that's how the studio time was booked. Well, before we uh, actually go to the studio, we'll go to the house or the office. And in both spots, they had uh, all they had more equipment where we can actually pre-product what we gonna record once they get ready to bring us to the big studio. You know, so we'll go over shit a few times. We do move by the time we go in the studio, we knock it out six, seven songs in one session. You know what I'm saying? Boom, we knock that shit out. So, um, as far as you know, being hands on with us, you know, they 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 never Slim would be the one to really critique our songs if needed. You know, baby, give a little insight on it, but if the, on, on the music end, if your Slim wasn't feeling that, that shit, he wouldn't let you put it down. You know what I'm saying? You'll have you rewrite it or something. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But, uh, you know, I can remember, you know, baby, most of the time, you know, baby uh, uh, drop Slim off at the studio, you know, make sure all the artists there or whatever, and he don't. You know, he going to do other shit like, you know, take that distribution or whatever. You know what I mean? And, by the time he come back, we head out the studio. You know what I'm saying? It'll be, it'll be like that until, uh, unless we have a show. I gotta hit that road for a tour or something. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, okay. I mean, yeah, I start with our group. You know what I'm saying? We, we was, we had problems in our group with the streets and and drugs and shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say that was one of our biggest faults. You know what I mean? Even though the music never affected us. You know what I'm saying? But we, we went through a stage. I call it the fucking, oh, we started the, oh, <laughs> the David Ruffin stage or whatever. You know what I'm saying? When the motherfuckers doing their thing and shit, you know, nigga, and drugs be the reason they can fall off like that. So, you know what I'm saying? And But it, it was like a phase that, 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 that my group went through. You know, my group went through a phase. It didn't, it wasn't something that, that happened and just stayed there because it was, we wouldn't still be in the industry. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, drugs are something serious, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's but, right. Uh, it, it, it was it was a major downfall. You know what I'm saying? We took a downfall from it, but I, like I said, it was a learning experience. Right, you so... I no, mean? you know, it never affected, never affected uh, the, our business or our music. You know what I'm saying? It was just affecting, you know, the, the group personal. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for you know, like you know, we still made concerts, still made hits. I mean, it got so so crazy to you know. At one time, we was we 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 everything we this this put out it was a hit, and it was so fucking crazy because now I look at it like twenty something years later. I look at it, man. We actually had a song about hero, like you know, actually glorifying that shit, and a million of fucking people went to fucking with. It. I don't in loving the song you know what I'm saying so I mean it, it, like I said it was a learning stage that we went through it we were glorified it at the time but you know right now I'm at the, I'm at the level where we both me and Tay both at the age where you know we felt like we was a part of the wrong at one time but now we want to be a part of the solution oh you yeah know what I'm saying? yeah that, and that so was a a song about telling motherfuckers don't fuck with that hero don't fuck with it you know what you mean? yeah I got to sing Six of a Row was my favorite song on that album. Because, you know, that was our first album. We got to name that bitch what we wanted. And it was it was our block, a uh, block that we had, like, basically built with bricks. You know what I'm saying? Six of a Row, if you, if you know about it, it's basically nothing but old folks. And, you know, it's a peaceful-ass spot. We terrorized that fucking name. Once we hit that bitch, we terror and to this day, it's still known for the same thing. Little youngsters doing their thing out there. Wow, wow, wow. You know what I'm saying? So that that that, that that's my baby for us our records, you know, our album we released. That's 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 the first, that's the baby, man. But Six and Marone is my favorite song on there. 
that 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 was a special album too, cause, cause that made us feel all uh, kind of solidified for us the numbers we done on Six and Marauder. And then we felt so comfortable, we really felt like stars, cause we was in a studio now. You know, we had remembered when we went through recording Six and Marauder album right now. I mean, stepping in the studio that was a, a, like luxury. You know what I'm saying? Real easy, real simple. You know what I mean? So it was a comfortable, it was a comfortable album we was doing, man. Okay. You know, we, we we all try to get away from bouncing a little little bit more on the album. Even though we did, we we still put uh, at least one or two bounce songs on every album. You know, you got to do that coming from New Orleans. You know, what I mean? right? But uh, yeah, we we would we oh uh, expressed a little more lyrical content on that album. You know, well that was the time that was the time I was going through my dog stage with the group. You know what I'm saying? I mean, with not with the, just the group, but through life. You know what I'm saying? I went to my my fucking my I, I call it uh, uh my uh what you call that shit? My middle breakdown or something. You know what I'm saying? That was my dog stage. My lost moms and you know I lost moms in '93, but that shit didn't hit me till like uh '90, the middle of '94. You know right. what I'm saying? I was able to actually record the album and you know, but I wasn't able to work the album because I, I was off in different facilities, either locked up or in a hospital just tripping, you know what I'm saying? So that was that was that was that was the years of, of my dog side with the group in life in general. You know what I mean? Um uh, Magma of Gallia was I feel like even though I'm time for life so well well more I mean way more units than oh uh, Magma of Gallia. Magma was like one of our best albums to me. You know what I'm saying? Because it was, it was I had a great time and period in the hood and shit. You know, the Mag Melf Cavalier, the projects was chilling. Nobody was beefing and you know, everybody getting up town money. And, you know what I'm saying? It was just a good time in New Orleans during that time. You know what I'm saying? And we was bubbling. We had a uh, this song on there for PNC called I'm Bowdy. You know, and that, that song was real hot. And we had the beef going back and forth with us. It was, oh, uh, it, was, it was, unfortunately, it was real. You know what I'm saying? Nobody got killed or nothing like that, but. It was that that shit used to go down, you know. We was look forward to seeing them niggas. I'm, I'm pretty sure they do the same with us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was it was cool, bro. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But oh uh, yeah, Mag Mel Calio, we had some heaters on that bitch. We also oh uh, got a chance to recall with Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim at the time on that album. We done the oh uh, the Come Up Move song with it. I think it's like number eleven on that something like that. Come Up Move is the name of it. Yep. Yeah, man, it was a great time right there, bro. Well, the, the, we came up with the name, uh, you know, a lot of our titles be like Sexes of Our Hood, like, you know, Uptown with Life, Six and Barone, Mag Melf Calio. But we came up with Mag Melf Calio because, you know, that, that's a part of the third wall, too. And we all, even though we stand on Six and Barone, we all represent those projects in our own way. <coughs> Tech actually came, he was, he was raised, he was born and raised in the mail for me. He later moved to Six and Barone. Yellow went to high school at Booker T, which, in the, which is in the mail for, I mean, in the old Calio project. So he was cool with a lot of people from back there. And the Magnolia was like, my second home, you couldn't miss me. I was, if I wasn't on Six and B, that, that's where I was at. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Running with every, I, all, every, anybody in the Magnolia can tell you, yeah, I fuck with the Lord. You know what you fuck with, you know what I'm saying? So we came up with the name, we had the already had Six and Barone. So we came up with Mag Melf Calico just to represent the three again with it, you know? Oh, man, it was, it was always family oriented, dog. I mean, I can't tell you a bad time. That we had when all of us was together, but never, you know what I'm saying? It was always love, you know, funny shit. You know, it was always about business, but, you know, we all enjoyed doing what we was doing. So it, it made it that easier, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <clears throat> during up time for life stage, we was, you know, we was in a, the, the, the best of the best studio for that. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. we going fly to get valley parked and all kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, come up, boo. Gotta be one of them. Yeah, I'm on a come up move. Everybody know that I'm a fool that's on a come up move. Cause uh, you know, Slim, 
Not only that was our dog, Slim was talented. You know what I'm saying? He, he was a beast, bro. He was one of the best that did what he did. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I got to go with Mac Mel Calio because I love doing songs that represent my hood and, you know, let you know, just draw on your picture and, you know, let you see that artwork of, of, of where we at and what we going through. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, from the Mac to the Mel to the Calio. Oh, uh, also, oh, uh, I see um, Manny Fresh Mix. Man, they had a cold blooded mix on up. You know, every album, we gave Manny the privilege of, of doing a solo song on our album. And that solo song, he would do a mix. And, and most of the time, he would add our, like, uh, he would add our samples of, of shit we done seen in, in the mixes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that was like my favorite three on that album. Okay. Originally, we started off with Cash Money. We used to call ourselves the Cash Money family. You know what I'm saying? So from there, Sugar Slim discovered the name Local 580. And what Local 580 was, it was like a union or something with just some, <clears throat> just any numbers that he picked to represent a union and added the name Local on top of it because we was only local and we was like, Gaining respect and you know what I'm saying, everybody feeling us on, on the southern end of the world. You know what I'm saying? So we were local five eighty. So when we came up with the uh, name two two six was right along right along the time we was, you know, in the process of making Uptown for Life album. Well, we, we noticed that we had many more fans and you know, we were sick of that that local image and that local name. So we just came up with the name Black Connection two two six. Uh actually Tech came up with the, the numbers 226, which, you know, I'm going to let the cat out the bag. It stands for Second Street, which is 2nd and D, you know what I'm saying? 2nd and Daniel, and 6 and Barone. That's where we get the numbers from, you know. That, that's all sets around our house, 226. So uh, we just added Black Connection to the end of it instead of, you know, putting local or uh, nationwide or end it, you know, all over it or whatever. We thought Black Connection would be the perfect words. It consisted of UNLV, uh, BG, uh, Lil Wayne, Juvenile, Miss T, uh, and, and Mr. Ivan was a part of 226 also. You know, that's 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 what we ran. You can't live too large and live too small. It's a fix, but 226 gon' still You want to go uptown, uptown. The N is for niggas, niggas. The L is for living, living. The V is for violence, violence. U is for uptown, uptown. The N is for niggas, niggas. The L is for living, living. The V is for violence, violence.